What if I told you the new jungle changes allowed you to do this to the enemy jungler now, to steal that from the enemy jungler now, to get these every single game, and you could still gank just as much if not more than before. What I'm going to do is show you exactly how you need to play for the rest of Season 13 with these big changes in order to give yourself the absolute best ability to control your games, carry your games, and obviously climb and win. So as you see the runes and the first clears of our challenger level game here, and we're going to go through this really quickly, but with a good formula, which means the first game is going to be the example. And then we're going to break down some of the principles used. And then we we'll use the second example to showcase those exact same principles with different outcomes so that you can understand it at a slower pace. Hopefully in conjunction, both of these examples give you the best package to climb in order to maximize your chances for absolute jungle domination. But don't forget, if you need an extra helping hand and you want to climb faster than 70% of other players and get to gold, diamond, and master tier about two years faster than everybody else, have a look at vikayu.gg through the link in the description below and find your best bespoke jungle coaching package along with courses dedicated to your specific MMR to help you climb to the next tier, all filled with relevant and actionable information as well as a free jungle improvement PDF to help you carry, win, and climb and learn how to Varda via yourself. Click the link below to join me on vikayu.gg, a jungler's learning paradise. So we full sequence down and now you think, aha, we need to take the bottom scuttle. Yeah, in the second example, we will talk about that. And typically you would do that. But if bottom lane just isn't the lane you want to gank and you want to focus more heavily on jungle denial, which, as I always say, is not only the bread, but also the butter on the sandwich of your jungling. You get it, right? Because without the bread, everything would just fall out. And if you can deny the enemy jungler, then you can very easily get your own econ. You can also very easily gank lanes and you don't have to worry about his econ because it's your econ and your lanes aren't being ganked because his lanes are being ganked by you. So in this case, we know the Lee Sin started bottom side. We know we have a much faster full clear. We know now we can go to the top side and leverage that prio into, of course, a free scuttle crab. The reason for this is the Lee Sin ganked early, as you would have seen, and our Silas will be in the lane versus the Zed who had to reset. Intelligent, right? Now, of course, that means we're going to give up the bottom scuttle. But so begins the most important part about this new jungling that I want you to realize. River control, jungle denial, it is back, counter jungling, sequencing, quadrant clearing, all those fancy terms we're going to go over in this video. You have to understand them and stitch them together, all the while still weaving in those beautiful ganks and playing around your level 6, and of course securing objectives and heralds. Sounds like a lot, it isn't, watch this. You kill the Zed because he overcommits on the Silas, and then instead of counter jungling the Lee Sin and, you know, maybe fighting, maybe pushing him off of those Krugs, we don't do that because, of course, now we have no mid laner, he has no mid laner, and our bottom lane's wave is not in a position to help us because the enemy's bottom lane will rotate first in that scenario. So we go back and we do our Raptors into the Krugs. Again, that topside quadrant taken. So full sequence and now into quadrant control. You'll see what I mean in the second example where we look at exactly this again. The idea here is that we look for the top lane gank after doing the quadrant. So in principle, what we're looking to do is do stuff on the map and then reward ourselves with a quadrant and then look to do stuff again if we don't need to reset. If there is nothing to do, like in this scenario, you just do your wolves into your grump and then you look to gank the bottom side because dragon control. If the dragon is down and bot lane is dead, you would do grump into wolves and then flex to the other side. And now the most important concept here is pressure because you don't necessarily always want to take a fight, but once you've used that prior to snag that dragon, you see the Lee Sin, you know the Zed is low in the mid lane, you can easily look to push them off because you have that PvP and that gold advantage. Also, you're a strong jungler. If you're playing a meta jungler, most likely you have this advantage. But the whole idea is, hey, look, I'm going to push you away. Don't fight me or you die. And by doing this, you control the rivers. Now you can move into his jungle. And guess what? In the lower elos, if the mid laner stays, hey, you get free kills. But the idea here is to use this for counter jungling. If there's no camps to counter jungle and you know he's going to try and counter gank, then you can do what the Javan does here. Extrapolate, predict, overcome and destroy. And the reason we do it this way is because this play allows us to sync up perfectly with 8 minutes and the spawn of the Herald, which we can now secure freely. And the whole point of doing a full sequence, controlling your quadrants, controlling the river, pushing people away from things, denying some stuff, getting objectives, is that you force them into a desperation play. And we all know in silver, gold, platinum, diamond, whatever elo, they're going to go and try and contest the dragons, the Heralds, that they should just give up, but they're not going to give them up are they? And so the point of this is to say, hey, look, I'm super strong at eight, nine minutes because I sequenced appropriately. I used my quadrants as a reset mechanism. I still was active on the map. Now, instead of being an AFK farming jungler or a spam ganking jungler, the big extremes, I'm in a nice balanced jungler, which is what we had at the end of season 12. It's back again. More gold in the camps, more opportunity to counter jungle, deny gold and gain gold myself. And of course, you must win this fight. If your teammates don't rotate and you can't win the fight, take the Herald, leave, fall back to your red side quadrant, go back to base. 
The thing is though, if you do win the fight, if it's a 1v1 and you win, if your team rotates and you win, now basically you don't fall back to your jungle as most junglers do. What do we do? 20% damage reduction to monsters removed? Okay, I take your blue and I take your grump. And because you know that Lee Sin was topside dying twice in a row and he knows you're taking his camps, he's 100% going to the bottom side. So now we can reset. We don't do our right side quadrant because we know we need to make sure we match that tempo to be present when the Lee Sin shows up. We also have a second dragon coming up, we have the Herald, we have a huge PvP advantage by finishing our Gore Drinker. None of that Kempunk chain bitch itemization here. And so last time we went to the bottom side, we had to do our Wolves Grump before we looked for a gank. There was no gank, so we took a dragon. This time we can see, hey, I'm strong enough, their bottom lane is vulnerable, I have mid prior, I'm gonna gank that first, and then what I can do is fall back to the scuttle, I can fall back to my blue side. I know Lee Sin's going to be in the area, so I can kill him as well, I can dive the Blitzcrank, we can take a few plates, we don't really need to force a Herald here because I want to see how things will develop. Zed will rotate, everyone will rotate, there's a bit of a swoop thing going on. And here's the whole point of having the sequencing control, the quadrant control, and the river control. It allows you, as the Javan, as the jungler, whoever you're playing, to ensure that you can win these fights with the gold advantage you have. It ensures you can use the outside in rule very, very effectively, taking those outside goodnesses before you fall back to your own camps. It can be a bottom lane, it can be a turret, it can be a counter jungle, it can be a scuttle crab, and then you can use the herald mid lane, you see a fight again, develop bot lane, you can rotate to that, you can take the dragon, and then you can do your blue side. Now the downside of doing the blue side here is that you would of course delay your back and spending all the gold you have. So it's better here to spend the gold on the reset after the dragon, knowing that you can go top side, do your red quadrant. If something happens mid lane, top lane, or whatever, you can cut, but you can also keep doing the full sequence and only react when something happens on the map that has a high probability of you affecting the outcome, which in this case happens just before we take the Grom. Now, if people die and they don't play properly and they kind of compromise the game state that you've given to them because the gold is equal in the game, despite the fact that there's a huge jungle diff going on, hey, it is absolutely okay to give up that top herald. Do it, shove the wave, hit a plate if you want, and go and steal his red. Go and steal his Krugs. Gank the bottom lane again. Whenever you don't have the opportunity to take a fight, to contest something, it's always better to push something else on the map to get some macro advantage and then do an equal and opposite. That means if they take your Herald and your Krugs, you take his red, his Krugs, and his bottom lane's life and their tower. Although I seem to have oversold that because if you can't do those things because they back off, the very least you get to kill the turret and then, you know, shove the waves and get all that juicy CS. Hey, in the mid to the late game, it's all free for all. You take whatever you can get, you push those numbers up, you get the gold, you get the experience. Every little bit helps to get level 16 first, your crucial itemization first, and just closing the game out first. Although the alternative to that would be to close the game out second, which I think is just losing. Now what happens if the game plays out a little bit differently, whereby we want to use a bit more counter jungling, there's less of a super kill snowball, but more of a tight game where we might have to play a little bit of a comeback, even though we have maybe mid prior this game, we had to force those things, and as you're seeing, basically, as long as you come out of the 15, 16, 17 minute mark ahead of everybody, standard macro and standard using your leads to win these fights is what lets you win these games. This video is about how you should jungle. Past 17 minutes, you're no longer a jungler outside of your smite and maybe taking some cams. Now you're just a champion in the League of Legends looking to win fights, win macros, and kill the Nexus. If you need help on that though, I've linked a video in the description below for that exact purpose. For now, let's look at a different scenario of the same kind of meta to reinforce all the concepts we just said because obviously that was quick and we need to do so. In this game, we have a Vi versus Jarvan analogs of each other, both full sequence down. Now you get down to the bottom scuttle and instead of playing mind games with prior based upon the Lee Sin's early gank, you say, hmm, do I have the prior to take this scuttle? We all know this trick and it's no, not flash and die like blabber. It's give it up, cross the mid lane because we have no mid prior, we have no bot prior, there's no point forcing this fight and dying. If you're gonna learn one thing from this video, if you're sequencing and farming with the increased gold experience, it's that, give up what you cannot fight for. Unless of course it's for the last donut, then you should fight for that. Now what I love about this is the enemy laners see this because we don't make it really a mystery, that's what we wanna do, everyone knows that's what the Javan wants to do, and so you instigate and force a full fight. The difference between say this and let's just say bronze for the hell of it is mechanics. You will have these fights in bronze and they just look atrocious. To be fair, and I've made the bronze course, silver course, and gold course Nexus Platinum Diamond, the mechanics do get better the higher you go, but there's still some weird things that go on. Regardless, if you're gonna make this and force this kind of fight, you gotta win it. You gotta play properly, or again, you've gotta give it up and go to your Krugs, Raptors, and do a resequence. However, the goal is to win it. Why? Because we know the second Grump is going to spawn around that 4 minute 20 marker, so we know we can snack that while the Vibe be dead. Remember the second camp that spawns after the first buff you take? 
whether it's your Red Krugs or your Red Raptors or your Red Grump, that will spawn around that, let's just say, 4 minutes 16 to 4 minute 24 range. Will depend on the champion you're playing against, the quality of the pilot of the champion. But you know, if you have a good old fashioned full sequence crap scuttle fisting and everyone dies and you're near their second camp that they took after the buff, then go ahead. Snack the Grump, snack the Krugs, snack the Raptors. Huge gold swing and huge experience denial. And now again, we've done the full sequence, we've had our early scuttle fights, we've done a counter jungle, how nice. Now we do quadrant clearing. So we're gonna go to base. Can we do something before we do Krugs and Raptors? Eh, not really. If I did some stuff, I'll just do my Krugs and Raptors. Once you finish the Raptors, can I do something on the map? Should I rotate to something? Is something gankable? Or should I carry on sequencing? Obviously, you can cut before mid lane. You can cut after mid lane. None of that really changes. You can also cut down to the bottom lane. You have the option to cut in whatever way you like because the blue side is the thing you can fall back to. Now, again, you might feel like, hey, should I always get kills? Should I chase to get something for the time invest? No. If you can burn sums and force people to rotate and waste people's time, that's always good. You always have that blue side to fall back to. We see the Vi doing stuff bottom lane. We cut across back down there is another fight that happens we go in and out we get another kill and now because we took all of that time off the map since our quadrant our red is respawning there's an orangey scuttle on the top side so while the red and the krugs and the raptors will be together in a few seconds let's finish off the blue side on our way up swap the direction take the scuttle crab now yes because we're tracking the vi we know she's going to be doing her blue side quadrant into that grump that we stole before but in this case, we just have a ward, so we see it, makes it play easier. If you see this develop and you have mid-prior, that's great, you can go 2v1. If you have no mid-prior and the top laner isn't a factor, just go in 1v1. You have 6, she does not. You have golden experience advantage. Use it to deny. Use it to invade, kill, and counter jungle. And then again, after the herald, the same exact thing. You can fall back to your red side and reset, or you can swap to a gank on the top side because that looks available. And then you can go back to base again, not doing your red side, because we know Vi is going to look to do the dragon. We're going to know she's going to look to be on the bottom side and take our blue side. We want to protect it. So we go back to base, leaving our red quadrant, and we head down to say no. That's the whole point of the golden experience advantages. It's only as good as how you use it. If you have it in your AFK farming and not anywhere where you need to be, what was the point? However, as I said, bad assessment can happen and your risk assessment needs to be good. But sometimes you'll say, this looks like a good fight. They play better than you and you die. This happens and that's why I'm showcasing it. The intent is the most important thing. You say the intent, you don't results based it. If we die from a good play, you can live with that. If you die from a bad play, well, I'm sure that's a little bit more annoying. Like having a wet sock and then putting your shoe on. Or spaghetti that's only half cooked. Well, you know what that means now? Because you died there, you're like, well, I'm a little bit behind. I'm just going to go ahead and take my red side quadrant, take the scuttle, do some counter junglings, and then cut across and go back to the mid lane. If you can do nothing else, you do your quadrant, then you say, what's next? Can you do that? Yes. Can I go further out? Yes. Can I escape if something happens? Yes. You gank the mid lane again, and we drop the herald again. And now instead of falling back to your blue side, again, use your pressure, use your advancement to get into the vice jungle. Translate that to a gank somewhere else if you can. If you cannot, again, you just fall back to your blue side. That's the whole point. I'm showcasing this game second because it doesn't have the same playmaking, but the same intent. And when the results are a little bit different, we adapt and we still wasted their time, force them to rotate, they get nothing, and I defend my own jungle from counter jungling while counter jungling her side. Huge. And then because we have such a big lead, you can afford yourself the time to hover. Is something going to happen? Is someone rotating? Is mid lane coming? Are they going to overcommit here? Are they resetting? Can we stick around to win a fight and get some more plates? You have to make that executive decision. If it's all doomed, your bot lane's dead and you can do nothing, hey, guess what? You just sequence back to the top side, get yourself some more camps, do some more counter jungling, and then you can reset, reassess, do we fight the Herald or the Dragon, and so on. The goal with all of this new meta shift is we're going back into the flow. We're going back into equal and opposite. They take a Dragon, I take a Herald. They go bot side, I still in counter jungle their camps. The denial is huge. And again, you're seeing a 316 Jarvan, which doesn't look that amazing, but he's 31 CSR or whatever over the Vi. She has done nothing because she was denied at every level. And so we come out of the mid game here, not as far ahead as we were in the last one, but strong enough that we can control and win any fight. Yes, we had to give up some dragons, that's okay. We still got heralds, we still got denial, and we still got turrets. That's the most important thing. So hopefully you can see in summary that we're looking to full clear early, maybe full clear second rotation, but it's centered a lot around doing your quadrants, doing outside in rules, doing some counter jungling, and maintaining control of the rivers. If you can hit all of these three markers while controlling objectives and of course weaving in those ganks or the intent to gank intelligently, you're still going to have high KP, high damage, high CSPM, and the days of the 4.6 CSPM junglers are over because if they do that versus what you're doing here, you're going to have an absolutely huge lead. If you want to understand more about the governing principles about how this is possible and what makes the best jungler the best jungler, click the video in the box on the top right.